Hi everybody, thank you again for connecting and hopefully you have no problems with the Wi-Fi and the connection. So today we will continue with similar exercises compared to yesterday. They are typical exercises from the Cambridge exam at level B2 and there are four different parts and the first part is a multiple choice exercise and you can see on the screen this is part one you have a typical article and it's necessary that you select the correct option from the list okay so here we have a list of options and the job is to select the correct option a b c or d for number one and for example here is number one number two number three and it's necessary to select the appropriate option and it's very interesting very challenging very tricky because the vocabulary is very similar and the options are very very similar but during this exercise it also is an opportunity to see new vocabulary new expressions and i can give you little tips and little advice in relation to the vocabulary the grammar and the structures during the exercise so this is part one and you can see it's just an ordinary article with the topic of memory so we will continue with this structure for this morning that's part one we also have part two so i'll try to find part two for you here part two is a very similar exercise and you have an article this is part two it's the same exactly the same you have an article but the difference between part one and part two is you have no options in part two so it's necessary to select from your memory from your vocabulary the best option for this section in part two so that's part two we have seen part one part two part three is very very similar you have an article and you have the space and you have a word at the end of the sentence and it's necessary that you change the word you change the form of the word for example increase is the verb and a substantivo the verb to increase and an increase so there's two possibilities but we need to change the form so it's possible we need the gerundio it's possible we need the adjective so we need to be conscious and to be aware of the different forms of each word so that's part three and very very interesting exercise very typical for the cambridge exams and then finally we have part four and part four is very very different so part four we have a sentence you can see number 25 it's a sentence do you know the cost of the trips asked Pamela and your job is to write the second sentence with the same significance as the first sentence and it's necessary to use the word they give you plus minimum in total minimum three maximum five words in the sentence and that is the exercise for part four you have six questions again number 26 you have a, a full sentence and your job is to write the second sentence with the same significance as the first sentence but it's necessary to use the word they give and in total you need a minimum of three and a maximum of five words at the level b2 okay so it's a very interesting exercise and during the exercises my idea is to help with the vocabulary help with the expressions help with the context in english and hopefully you can learn some things from the class that is the plan so that's part four part three part two and this is part one with the options so we can begin and hopefully you enjoy the class and yesterday we were disconnected at the end before we finished and again today we have another possibility to look at another story so last week we had stories every day in relation to little morals of the story and today it's possible if we have time to continue with a new story okay so this is the story for today with 
a little message or a little moral from the story. So very interesting as well. So let's begin with part one. And just to check that Facebook is functioning. I think we are okay and everything is working. So we are live, that's fine. So the topic is memory. Okay, so first you have to be clear the difference between the verbs to remember and to remind. This is a very important issue because remember is something I do. For example, last weekend, I remember the party. I remember the moment. It's in my memory. So the substantivo is a memory and the verb is to remember. Similarly, the verb to remind, this is a little bit different. For example, when you do the action to another person, I remind you. So the significance is I tell you about the event. I tell you about the moment. So I remind you. So there is a very important difference between remember and remind. And the substantivo for the verb to remember is a reminder. So very important. And the title is memory. So that is the context of the article, which is important to remember. So let's begin. Memory is at the something of, at the heart of, at the key of, at the bottom of, at the focus of. At the bottom of definitely is a possibility. For example, at the bottom of the ocean, at the bottom of the sea. Okay, so at the bottom of is a definite possibility. At the heart of also is a very, very typical expression. And we have two possibilities here, at the bottom of or at the heart of. But of course, number zero, they give us the answer. So the answer for zero is A, at the heart of our sense of identity. So it's the core, okay, at the core of. So it's a synonym, at the heart of or at the core of, okay. Um, if we did not have memory, so first, I will read the article, I will read the text first without the options, just to get a sense and get a feeling for the exercise. Remember, in the exams, you only have maybe 10, 11 minutes on average to complete this part. So of course, in the exam, you only have a short time to complete this exercise. But today, we have a lot of time just to practice and just to analyze the vocabulary. But first, I will read the text just to give you a sense of the article. So memory is at the heart of our sense of personal identity. If we did not have memory, we would not be something of our relationships with other people and would have no space that we had had any past at all. And without memory, we would have no knowledge on which to space our present and future. Memory of three processes, registration, retention, and recall. Registration happens when we consciously notice something. Retention is the next space. When we keep something we have noticed in our minds for a certain period of time. Finally, recall occurs when we actively think about some of these things that are something in our minds. Every day we are subjected to a vast space of information. If we remembered every thing we had ever seen or heard, life would be impossible. Consequently, our brains have learned to register only what is of importance. Okay, and the options you can see, the list of options are familiar, aware, informed, acquainted. This is the most interesting and maybe that's new for you. So for example, an acquaintance is a person that you are maybe familiar with. You have an acquaintance. The significance is a person that you know, but you don't know very, very well. So he or she is an acquaintance. The significance is a friend, but not very good friend. You only met that person last week. This is an acquaintance. Or maybe you had a small introduction but you don't know this person very, very well. That's an example of an acquaintance. And the other structure is to be acquainted with, and that's the same. It's like to be introduced to or to be presented to somebody for a short time. You are acquainted with that person. 
and that is very interesting and very typical and maybe formal and advanced vocabulary but it is very important the next option to view suggestion belief and idea belief is important because the verb is to believe and the substantivo is belief so the noun has the f and the verb has the v so it's very very important the verb to believe and the substantivo a belief okay and um, again number three you have base depend do and make so there's always a very interesting discussion between the difference between to make and to do generally to make is a physical construction you make food you make uh, a table so make is a physical construction and do is usually an activity do the exercise do the homework do the the washing so do is normally an activity and make is typically a physical creation okay so that's the difference between do and make contains involves includes consists so it just depends on the context and we will look at the article to try and select the correct option action division set and stage set is very very flexible we have lots of different possibilities with set a lot and i will just look at this article and this exercise first in relation to set six we have seated stocked stored or cited okay again they maybe are similar similar situations but it completely depends on the sentence not too difficult vocabulary level amount extent number again not difficult vocabulary just depends on the situation exact single one or isolated okay so in the first paragraph we have the option sorry i'm gonna move that again because i lost the option so let's look at the first section and i'm gonna move this to the right like yesterday okay so memory is at the heart of our sense of personal identity if we did so this is the conditional if we did not have memory we would not be familiar of we would not be aware of we would not be informed of we would not be acquainted of our relationships with other people and would have no view that we had had any past at all we would have no suggestion that we had had any past at all we would have no belief that we had had any past at all or we would have no idea that we had had any past at all okay so that's the first two options in the text for example other it's very important because other is typical with plural other days other weeks other years and here people is plural so it's necessary other people that's the first lesson and it's very very important because another is for singular we say another day another week another year but other we say plural days weeks years etc so that's a very important difference we have another for singular and other for plural and here it's other so people is plural normally okay but normally we say one person and two people so that is key because sometimes a lot of people make the error with people and um, so we always say one person and two people or three people okay that's the little difference but it's very very important and the option again take your time and maybe you want to do this exercise yourself but maybe you have an idea for the answer for number one and the best answer i think is aware and the reason it's the best is because of the preposition of okay so if you are aware sorry i'm going to move it again and um, here we go so i'll move that down so the best answer is aware because of the preposition of it's very very typical i am aware of the situation aware of the problem aware of the, the details so aware of is very very typical combination and for this reason it's the best option that you are aware of the situation aware of the problem aware of and that is definitely the key and the secret for number one and um, familiar we would say familiar with 
okay i am familiar with the situation i am familiar with the problem inform we would maybe say inform about i have been informed about the situation i have been informed about the details and as i said before acquainted is typical acquainted with okay so interesting vocabulary and it just depends on the preposition and the best preposition with aware is aware of okay so very interesting very important and a very good example number two other people would have no view no suggestion no belief or no idea first we say no in relation to the difference between no and not so no is typical with the noun and um, no time no energy no food no money so no is typical with the noun and not is typical with the adjective for example not tired not hungry not uh, big so with the adjective it's typical not and also with the verb it's typical not i am not you are not so that's the general rule between no and not and here we have no so it's necessary and noun but of course the four options are nouns so your view is your opinion if i say to you what is your view the significance is opinion okay what is your suggestion that's no problem what is your it's very similar i think in other languages a suggestion is something you suggest which is the verb and your belief what is your belief it's a bit stronger what exactly is your is your strong belief and what is your idea so your idea is maybe similar to plan and um, possibly opinion but um yeah it's, it's very it's similar in other languages as well in spanish for example is idea so you would have no idea is the best option i have no idea about the time so the significance is i have no information i have no facts i have no data i have no uh, knowledge of something so i have no idea what time the bus will arrive i have no idea if it will rain today so that's the typical structure if you would have no idea no concept no knowledge no information okay so it's concept knowledge and for this sentence i think it's perfect so again it's the conditional because it's the conditional we would say would have no and yeah i'm gonna do this again i need a solution for this in the future but um and then here we have the subject we but we have had had and that definitely is possible for example i had had so it's a bit strange it looks a little strange had had but it is possible and the construction is the subject i you he she the auxiliary verb to have in the past plus the participle of the verb have so this is an example of the past perfect okay and that's a very good example so we had had any past at all and at all is a bit differ difficult but it's very very common and um, for example i have no food at all and the significance is completely no food absolutely no food i have no time at all i have no energy at all i have absolutely no energy absolutely no time etc etc so it's a little combination but it is very very important um, and here you are not you had an absolutely no idea in the sentence number two you had absolutely no idea so this the correct option for number two is idea number three and without memory we would have no knowledge we would have no idea we would have no concept on which so this is the key on which to base our present and future on which to depend our present and future on which to do or make so very very interesting and the secret i think here is the preposition on okay and typically with on we say to depend on absolutely that's completely typical and completely common for example you depend on the internet you depend on your friend the typical error is depend of that's the typical error okay 
because in Spanish in particular it's depende de and de is the translation for of but in English it's more typical to depend on that's very very important so you depend on the person you depend on the situation and we have another possibility in English to rely on so for example you rely on the internet you rely on the bus the significance is the same you depend on the bus or you depend on the internet and the adjective is reliable so you can say a reliable person a reliable service a reliable uh, company and the negative is unreliable so very important adjectives very important vocabulary and something to remember because it's very typical in English this vocabulary particularly the more advanced but very very important so depend on is one possibility because we have the preposition on do on not really make on no there's no real combination do on make on no so do or make no and um, yes you make your present and you make the future maybe but because of on it's not really correct and then the second possibility is to base on that's definitely a strong possibility so for example i give you a sentence I based my opinion on the facts okay and the significance is my my opinion comes from my opinion originates from the facts so it's very very typical based plus on the second possibility is the, the movie is based on a true story that's very very typical also the movie is based on a true story and the other error or confusion is maybe based in the only time we say based in is when it's a location or a city for example the movie was based in Ireland so the only time we use based in is for a location okay because the other times it's based on a true story based on fact and here and um, it's perfect to base our so you base your future you base the present the foundation of the present and the foundation of the future is on memory okay so it's the most appropriate answer is base very interesting that's one two three options and now you have a good idea of the exercise and i think we have completed very well the first three so let's continue and number four memory so maybe i can move this up here a little bit yes and that's perfect so and also to the right so i don't get disconnected memory contains of involves of includes of or consists of three processes registration retention and recall so what information we have we have the word of the preposition of so that's the key okay so you need to ask yourself what is the most typical combination with of contains of not really so we would say maybe memory contains three processes that's a possibility okay with no preposition so it is typical with contain there's no preposition so memory contains three processes that's the typical structure you can say memory involves three processes again it's a similar concept but there's no necessity for the preposition with involves and um, maybe you are involved in in another situation it's possible you are involved in but in this situation there's no preposition appropriate especially not involved of includes again there is no preposition typically associated with include so you could say memory includes three processes no preposition and here we have of but it's not adaptable it's not suitable it's not appropriate with contains involves includes the only option and the only possibility is consists of and that's very very typical structure consists of okay um, and I think in Spanish it's consiste in so the preposition in is not correct 
the best preposition in English with consist is consists of. For example, the year consists of 12 months. You've lots of possibilities, lots of possibilities, but always the majority of the time is consists of. And for this reason, it's definitely the best candidate at the moment because we have the word of. So consists of is very, very important. For example, my lasagna consists of three ingredients, three or four ingredients. So consists of, consists of, consists of. There is a second phrasal verb we say made up of. So you can say my lasagna is made up of three ingredients or you can say memory is the verb to be is made up of okay so that's another synonym it's a phrasal verb with the same significance of consists of so number five registration happens or occurs when we consciously so this is the adverb ly the subject is we consciously notice is the verb which is very important and the significance is similar to dar sequenta to realize so a typical question is for you have you noticed the change in the city and the significance is have you seen have you recognized have you realized have you seen as i said as to vista the change in this in the city so it's very very important uh, verb to notice um, as the verb the second possibility is a notice like a noun and that's maybe an, a piece of paper or a sign it's a notice official business notice it's a document to give you information as well so that's the substantivo but the verb to notice is similar to realize or to see or to recognize okay so that is um, the significance of the verb notice here. Retention is the next action, next division, next set, next stage. Okay, so action is very understandable. I think most people understand action. It's like activity, job, something you do. Next division is more when you comp in the compartments, the departments, you have different divisions. It's a possibility because we have maybe a compartment, we have registration, retention, recall, maybe division is possible. Set is very, very flexible, but the significance of set, yes, is like a collection. We say a set of cars, a set of toys, a set of books, etc., etc. The significance is maybe a collection, but in this situation, um, it does not really make sense. It's not the most appropriate because it's not retention is not a collection. So the next option is a stage, and a stage is very important in your life. Como etapa, okay? Tienes un nueva etapa, a new stage in your life, okay? It's like a new period. It's like a new era, okay? A new period, a new era, a new time. Um, that's the first significance of a stage. The second significance is in the theatre scenario. You have the stage in the theatre, and that's very, very important. So stage in the theatre. And for example, you like to be on stage. That's a typical preposition, on stage. The actor, the actress, it's a performance, and they are on stage. We have an expression to upstage someone that means to have a better performance than somebody. So your friend comes to the party and your friend has the most amazing uh, costume, but you come to the party and your costume is better than your friend's. So you upstage your friend. You are the center of attention. And you upstage your friend. That's the significance when you have more attention than somebody else, okay? It is possible a verb to stage, and that means to organize, for example, to stage an event, to stage a protest, similar to demonstration, and the significance is to organize or to prepare and to hold or to manage the event you stage a protest. Okay, so that's important for sure. 
So there's two significances. And I think for this reason, a stage is like a period of time in the process. Okay, so it's a state specifically connected to the process. You have different stages of the process. It's different times, different periods of the process. Okay, when we keep something we have noticed, we have seen, we have identified in our minds for a certain period of time. Finally, recall when you remember happens or occurs when we actively think about some of these things that are seated in our minds, that are stocked in our minds, that are stored in our minds or that are cited in our minds. Very, very interesting. Okay. So seated is a little bit different. For example, you are seated beside your friend at the wedding. And that means in relation to your seat, your physical seat. It's your location. It's where you are sitting. Okay. This is similar. Sitting is more the present continuous. And you are seated, I think, is more the adjective um, or the participle. But it's a little bit different. So... In this situation with number six in your mind not really but there's one possibility you have deep-seated emotions and the significance is the emotions are positioned deep in your body the position they are seated they are positioned in your body so that is possible deep-seated emotions but in this context it's not the best option stocked is very important we say to stock the shop, we have a stock room. So the stock in the shop is the quantity of products. So you have a lot of stock in the shop, you have a lot of products, you have a lot of merchandise, you have a lot of things to sell in the shop. And the verb is to stock the shop and the significance is to put the products in the shop. Okay, so you can say in stock, the product is available, the product is in stock, or the product is out of stock. It's not available. We do not have the product in the shop. It is out of stock. That's typical as well. There is a phrase of verb to stock up, and that means maybe to accumulate. So if you stock up, the significance is maybe to accumulate. For example, if you are expecting snow with the weather, you are expecting a storm, you're expecting snow it's a good idea to go to the shop and to stock up with bread with milk with food so you accumulate the food in your house in preparation for the storm okay and in this situation with your mind it's not typical to stock something in your mind not really no to store is very very similar so you store something on your computer and the significance is to keep or to save. So you store something in the computer. The significance is to keep or to save. And that means you put the item on your computer for your computer to remember, record our, okay? So to store is very, very good. And as I said, typical for computer, maybe for the telephone, you store something on your telephone and the significance is to maintain or to keep something on your telephone and in your mind yes you can store something in your memory okay to store in your mind that's typical and store in your memory so this is a typical combination a typical possibility and for this reason i think it's the best option stored in our minds kept maintained in our minds so six the best option is c stored number seven Every day we are subjected to a vast level of information, a vast amount of information, a vast extent of information, a vast number of information. So information is uncountable. It's not possible to count one information, two information. No, it's, it's uncountable. So for this reason, we say how much, how much information, how much chocolate, how much water, how much money, uncountable, uncountable, uncountable. That's the first Thing. so number is for countable objects what number of uh, what number of you have a number of pens a number of books a number of days so number is associated with countable so for this reason it's not the correct answer here because information is 
uncountable and we never say number of information no because it's not countable extent is to a level so for example i agree with you to some extent i agree with you to a different to a distance okay so that's a very famous expression i agree with you to some extent and the significance is i agree with you to a particular level okay so it's a possibility and again level is very similar to extent but because information is uncountable normally we say amount and um, you have a, a large amount of chocolate a large amount of money a large amount of time a large amount of patience so for things that are uncountable it's typical to say amount okay and here it's perfect because information is uncountable and the best option is amount of information so for me the best option is b okay if we continue if we remembered every something thing every exact thing every single thing every one thing every isolated thing we had ever seen or heard life would be impossible so very very interesting and there is a particular answer and um, every exact thing it's not really fluent it's not typical it's logical and it's understandable but it's not very fluent it's not very very common yes it's understandable but it's not comfortable every single thing is very very comfortable and it's very very good it's very typical in english for example every single person every single day every single hour so it's emphasis for every person single not soltero soltera in relationship not in this situation it's like single as in one okay so every one person and for this reason i have the doubt with one because it's very very similar but it's not comfortable it's not typical and the most typical is every single person every single day so it's emphasis on the day every single hour okay so that's a very famous expression in english just to emphasize the object or to emphasize the thing the person okay so every single hour every single day so the answer i think for eight is definitely probably a uh, single okay so interesting and just to check the answers to give you an idea i think they are here so the answer for number one is be aware of Okay, so you remember aware of, you can see there. And the answer for number two is D, which is uh, idea, you had no idea. And for three, it is um, A, base on, remember base on. So that's very interesting as well. And then if we continue, the option for four is memory, um, D, consists of okay so consist of is the reason because it's typical the preposition of consist of five is also the stage the next stage in the process and number six is uh, also c um is stored like the computer like the telephone stored in your mind and seven is number i think seven is b amount of information and eight is every single okay so that's a good exercise good practice and now we can continue i suppose to part two okay so remember part two is very very similar but the difference from part two is you have no option in the text you have to invent from your memory from your vocabulary you have to select and the best advice I can give you for this exercise is the list of possible options for example it could be pronoun it could be subject pronoun or it could be object pronoun for example it could be i you he she okay we or it etc uh, we you they this is a possibility the second possibility is the object pronoun give it to me you him her us and uh, you them that's the second possibility so pronouns are very very typical 
could be prepositions and in English we have maybe 150 prepositions in, out, under, over, forward, back. We have a lot of prepositions for movement, direction and position so it could be a preposition, it could be a phrasal verb and in phrasal verbs we have a lot of possible combinations of phrasal verbs. We have thousands and thousands of phrasal verbs and prepositions are very related to the phrasal verb so very very important uh, possibility phrasal verb it could be auxiliary verbs and the typical auxiliary verbs are to do to have to be and they are the most typical auxiliary verbs okay so for example do is maybe the past uh, negative it could be for emphasis have is typical for the present perfect and the past perfect and to be is typical for the passivo okay it could be conditional for example would if it could be these types of words it also could be modal verbs and remember the modal verbs can could may might so usually it's something grammatical usually it's something small it could be an article uh, for example a and the it could be a linker however but and Furthermore, maybe so it could be something like this. So that's the general list of possibilities for this section Yes, there's a lot of things but usually it's grammatical and it's not really specific vocabulary So that's the first thing you need to remember. Okay, so let's begin and we will read just to get a general idea first today I am visiting a sweets factory a building squeezed between a railway line and a canal something I watch trucks filled with sugar arrive at the factory where this family owned company has been making sweets for some 80 years being in a factory this one is exactly children dream of I am staring at a huge vats of sticky liquid eventually ends up as mouth-watering sweets Every now then I see a factory worker in a white coat put a sweet into her mouth. Alyssa Kelly, granddaughter of the company owner, remembers visiting the factory as a child with her grandfather. He would take me onto the factory floor and introduce me, she says. He told me, you may work there some day, and indeed she has continuously 1999 the sense of family is of the reasons employees are remarkably loyal to the company interesting so maybe you have an idea of some of the options it's a very good idea at the beginning to read the text first to have a general idea and a sense of the text so let's start with the first paragraph so today i am visiting that's the present continuous the subject is i Auxiliary is to be. I am visiting the gerund, a sweet factory. So the factory is the substantivo, and a is the article, and the adjective is sweet. Okay, or maybe that's a noun and noun. So sweet are like dulces that you gemelos. Okay, a building, so substantivo, article. Squeezed is the first important vocabulary. So squeeze is with the sponge, sponja, when you have the sponge, you squeeze the sponge or you squeeze something. It's very, very apretado, I think. So the translation here in the dictionary specifically for squeeze is here. And it's common in English, the verb to squeeze, apretar, estrujar, okay? Um, very flexible, very typical to squeeze into the car squeeze into a jacket and we say a tight squeeze and the significance is it's difficult to enter so it's a tight squeeze that's a possible combination and also you can say maybe a new squeeze in relation to a relationship if the person has a new squeeze it's a new person that they are affectionate with or a new person they are intimate with. So a new squeeze is maybe a new uh, partner or an intimate partner, okay? Um, 
for the appointments if you want to make an appointment with an accountant or a solicitor or a professional they can squeeze you in and the significance is to fit you in which means they will find a time for you they will find an hour they will find a space for you to come and speak with them okay so that is important so here it's squeezed between so it's very very tight a pretar entry a railway line and a canal so here we have the subject i and the verb is to watch so you need to think creatively of the possible option trucks filled with sugar cane arrive so the verb we have is watch and the second verb we have is arrive so two activities are happening at the same time so he's she or he is watching and at the same time the truck filled with sugar so the subject is the truck arrives so two actions are happening at the same time and the best word to use in this situation when two things are happening at the same time in spanish is probably mientras okay in english we say while so while i watch at the same time mientras i watch trucks filled with sugar arrive and the second possibility for while in english is as okay so there are two significances the first significance is while and the second significance is as okay um, at is location you arrive at the airport you arrive at the station arrive at physical location at where this is the relative pronoun it's the factory where so it's substitution it's repetition this family owned so here we have the hyphen and it's the company is the substantivo and family owned is the adjective has been making so this is the present perfect in the continuous has been making difficult tense but very important sweet for some 80 years yes for 80 years is perfect but for some is like approximately roughly about okay roughly about 80 years that's the significance of some okay and that's the first paragraph so i think as a while is number one we continue to the second paragraph being in a factory this one is so the verb is to be exactly something children dream of so the verb to dream is sueñar i think sueño sueñar no sé the verbo pero it's typical the preposition dream of or dream about okay i dream about going to ibiza okay and you can say i dream of going to ibiza so it's typical preposition dream of or dream about it is possible to phrase our verb to dream up and that means to create your idea or to create your story so if you dream something up you create the image or you create the idea okay also you can say daydream as the verb and the significance is you dream during the day when you are awake and your mind is moving so you're daydreaming and that's very very important vocabulary okay so for this situation there's only one real possible answer for 11 and i think as well as this option pronouns prepositions phrasal verbs auxiliary verbs conditionals it's very very typical relative pronouns and the typical relative pronouns are which that who when uh, where and here i think we might have the best option uh, what so this one this factory is exactly what children dream of okay so the factory is amazing it's unbelievable it's a dream so it's exactly what children dream of okay now we need to find the answer for number 10 so in a factory is the subject this one is maybe repetition of the factory so we have two situations we have a factory and we have also a factory so the best option here i think is when you compare similarities we probably say like this one so being in a factory like this one or as this one i think you have two possibilities for the answer like or as and um, 
and for me they are the most comfortable and most appropriate option it's a very difficult exercise and you need to try and identify the most fluent and the most comfortable words in relation to the sentence and the most comfortable and best option here is like or as okay and um, i am staring this is very very important vocabulary because the verb to stare is when you look at something for a long time i think it's spanish fijar so in english we say it is rude to stare and the significance is es mal educado para fijar a alguien so it's rude to stare at somebody very important uh, vocabulary very important verb and in this situation is the present continuous i am staring at huge is the significance enormous massive very very big so very very big vat is difficult vocabulary a vat is like a barrea a barella no se in espanol in english we say a barrel so a barrel is like a container and it's typical with the liquid you have a vat and a vat is like a big barrel or a big container of the product okay sticky is the adjective so the verb is to stick it's come up pegar so if i stick something it's pegar and the adjective is sticky it's possible a sticky situation and the significance is maybe very delicate very awkward it's very uncomfortable very hard it's a sticky situation it's complicated okay so that is important for sure um and here it's the liquid the liquid is pego pegoso i think pegoso in these it's very sticky the floor is very sticky as well you can say floor is very sticky okay um i am staring at you vats of sticky liquid ends up is important as well so eventually is the adverb ly eventually end up is the final position so you end up in the restaurant and the significance is your final position or your final location is the restaurant so you start in one location but you end up in another location so that's to end up your final location okay and um, and here we have the subject sticky liquid and probably we need um maybe again a relative pronoun i think relative pronoun is probably the best option here it's like a substitution for the subject and i think you have two possibilities you could say that or maybe which okay so sticky liquid which eventually ends up as mouth watering sweets that's very very important vocabulary mouth watering and um, so basically when your mouth is full of water like saliva it's because you want to eat something or you desire something so i am looking at the chocolate and my mouth starts to water because it's amazing it's fantastic we have a verb to drool and that's the same significance when the saliva or the water in your mouth the liquid comes down your mouth because you see something incredible that you desire and that you want so mouth watering is a typical adjective and in this situation it is the sweets the gemelos that you really desire and you really want and your mouth is watering okay the next expression is a very very typical expression so the list again we have a lot of lists but here we have conditional modals article linker relative pronouns and to add to this list it's possible expressions <laughs> and here we have an expression the famous expression is every now and then okay so the question is you go to the cinema frequently you go to the cinema often and the answer i go every now and then and the significance is occasionally not frequently not all the time maybe one time per month two times per month every now and then occasionally so that's a very very famous expression and for this reason it's the best option for 13 every now and then i see a factory worker in a white coat put the sweet into so it's typical put something into her mouth okay Alyssa kelly granddaughter so you have the grandfather which is abuelo abuela grandmother grandfather abuelo and the grandchild is the 
grandson, granddaughter, and the grandchild in general. So the granddaughter is the hija. Uh, no sé en español exactamente granddaughter, pero it's la hija uh, y abuela. Okay, abuela y hija de su madre, más o menos. So granddaughter is the daughter, the child from the grandmother, abuela or abuelo. Okay. So she's the granddaughter of the company owner, el dueño, okay, remembers, that's the verb, so she, Alyssa, remembers with the third person, with the S, visiting, because after remember, I think it's gerundio, I remember eating, I remember going, I remember talking, so después uh, remember, recordar, es gerundio, okay, the factory as, very interesting, and I think, not too difficult. I think 14 is a bit easier. As child, remember, is singular and plural is children. So we say one child and three children. So because it's singular, we need to say a child. So I remember visiting the factory as a child. Okay, also as is important for work. I work as a painter, I work as a doctor. So you need to have the preposition as typically in professions, okay? He would take me onto is the preposition on to. So on is for the floor and to is the movement. Take me onto the floor and introduce me is like present me, presentar, introduce you to a friend, introduce you to a person. She says he told me. So remember the difference between say and to tell. So say is typically with the preposition say to and tell is typically without the preposition and the verb is direct to tell and the past is told okay so a little tricky but that's the most important answer here okay so he told me you may may is a modal verb it's like permission or may might could are very very similar but may is typical with permission and it's very very similar might or could but in this case I think it's perfect for permission so you may work here someday it's a possibility you could work here someday you might work here someday so possibility and in this case I think it's the best situation the best idea is a possibility you may work here someday and indeed is like the hecho in fact indeed she has so indeed is very similar to the hecho in espanol Okay, she has, and that's reference to work. She has worked here continuously. So this is the adverb, and here we have the year. So it's very similar or very typical with the year and the time. We say from or we say since. Okay, so normally from eight o'clock to nine o'clock. Okay, so from is typically with two, from eight to nine. But since is for one moment in the past. Okay, so since 8 a.m. I started uh, at 8 a.m. But you have as typical the present perfect as well. And um, it is typical the present perfect with since. So I have been working since 8 a.m. So it's the present perfect. And that's typical time we use since. And in this situation, we have the auxiliary has, which is the assumption has worked. So it's the present perfect since 1999, okay? The sense of family is here, we have reasons in the plural and we have of. So this is a classic phrase, an expression, a combination, a collocation, maybe an expression. And the typical structure is one of the best days, one of the biggest cities. So you have plural, plural, and you have of, and you have of. So this typical structure is one of the principal reasons, one of the reasons. Employee is a worker. So the employee is the worker and the employer is the company or the manager. So the difference between employee, employer, very, very important always. Okay, employee is the worker and employer 
is the company. Okay, very, very important, very typical. A remarkably loyal, loyal is like faithful, and loyal, I think, is como fidel. Fidel, creo que es fidel in español. So just to double check here, loyal is uh, fidel, I think. Uh, sorry, fiel, not fidel, fiel. Okay, so if estás muy fiel, you are very loyal and faithful. And remarkably is like incredibly and um, amazingly loyal to the company. Okay, very good. That's a good idea for part two. You have an idea now of the method of the way to do this exercise. It's typical in the Cambridge exams, level B2, level C1, level C2. The structure is very, very similar, but the vocabulary is maybe more difficult and the question is more difficult depending on the level. But this is typical level B2 and very good practice, very, very good practice, very good exercise. And remember, the typical list that is possible for the answers is here, as we have seen. It could be expressions, it could be relative pronouns, it could be linkers, it could be an article, modal verb, conditional, auxiliary verb, phrasal verb, preposition, pronoun, um, subject, object, pronoun. So they're the typical list. And now you have a good idea of the structure. And hopefully the next time you try these exercises, will be easier, will be better, and um, excuse me, and that will be good practice for you for the future. So that's part two. Already we saw part one, and of course we have part three and part four, but I think for today, I think that's very, very good, and um, I hope that you have understood the majority of the explanations. I hope you enjoyed the exercises. I hope your answers were more or less good. I hope the connection was fine. Um, and thank you for watching. Um, remember, everything is, it's a free class, but if you want to leave, sorry, if you want to leave uh, a little tip or a donation, I will put the information here. Some people want to uh, leave a tip. So you are welcome to make a little donation if you want, it's possible with Bizum. It's possible with Revolut, it's possible with bank transfer, it's only optional. Some people like to leave a little tip and that's fine and that's great and thank you. Um, but there are the details if you want and you can take a picture, you can do it later um, and that's perfect. But it's a good opportunity during the pandemic year, years, difficult, difficult times for a lot of people. Um, so it's a good opportunity to try and help this way and uh, hopefully you can do something similar for other people as well in your job. You can try to help in a little way if possible. I know it's very difficult, but um, that's a possibility. So thank you for today. And um, I think that's everything. I hope the connection was okay, as I said, and um, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great uh, day and hopefully keep in touch and we'll talk soon. We have other classes, for example, tomorrow, at uh, 3.15 Ireland time. It's a webinar at 3.15 and people are welcome to attend. So if you want to join, just send a message or a contact. Uh, you can join the classes anytime you want. So thank you so much, have a great day and hopefully talk to you soon. And thank you so much for watching and leave a comment or um, a note with your feedback. That would be fantastic as well. Thank you and have a great day.